guys, it's Migs with Market Open. Uh, let's go ahead and do the uh, Market Open recap. Uh, ended up the day up 610 uh, because of VXX. Um, I swear, sometimes whenever you take a trade and you just feel like the market is taking it, is personally attacking you, I swear, I feel like that happened today on, uh, on low, the trade that I took. But, you know, sometimes uh, you win some, sometimes you lose some. So now this morning, the first trade I took was on USG. Um, it was, this is actually a gap up. And the reason I initially thought that it was going to be a gap down or uh, it was going to sell off was because of the news. So I've been, I've been working on only trading stocks with a catalyst behind it. So I actually looked a little bit into the news. And uh, I, I didn't, all I'm doing is just reading the title of it just to make sure that it has something that's uh, valid. So this morning when I looked at USG, just made sure that it had something. And uh, I went back and it said something about that they were discussing a buyout at 42. I'm like, okay, cool. It has a gap up. And then I noticed that it started selling off a little bit and it made a lower high. So then later on when I, when I looked, uh, let's see here, probably somewhere around 850 something. Uh, okay, so then it said USG board directors anonymously rejects unsolicited proposal from those people. So what you have is you had very hopeful people that were bought from 34 all the way up here. So, and obviously they, they paid a, a premium because it was pre-market. Uh, so they paid a lot higher price and they were hopeful that they were going to get bought out at 42 and the company came out and said we're not selling you our the shares um so obviously all you're left to do is a take profit and uh the people that bought obviously they have to sell now uh because it's just going to keep going lower and so initially i thought uh this was just going to tank at the very beginning it didn't exactly tank but the spreads were uh, they were kind of gross at the very beginning. It was very jumping. Um, so right off the bat, we kind of sold off. We pulled back, and I went ahead and shorted it with my stop up here at uh, 40.10 it was going to be. So I got filled the very next candle right at 39.86, so kind of a crappy fill. Uh, so as you can see, this is what I meant by the spreads. It came all the way down to 39.75 and just got bought right back up. So just, it flashed down, I got filled, and it came right back up. Um, so it actually sold off, and it very quickly got bought up. Um, almost hit my two to one on this, and like the spreads, the, the actual bid for me to, or actually no, the ask did not actually hit my price targets, so I never actually hit cover to be able to take my partial. So, I didn't, uh, I didn't cover part it, like any part of it at all, and uh, it got bought up immediately. And I ended up actually moving my stop down to forty oh one, and as you can see, I covered at forty oh one. So I ended up not making. Well, I ended up losing money. Obviously, I ended up making or losing like seventy five dollars. Uh, then again, um, I shorted. I noticed that there was a double top here at the forty ten. So I went ahead and shorted USG again. I got a bad fill again um, at 39.77. I wanted to short it here at 39.90 as it was breaking below this 20 cent stop right here at the double top. And like I said earlier, very bad spreads. It If you could see this candle, it just flashed down all the way to 39.50, 39.55. And it just came right back up. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. So it actually ended up selling off and I didn't want to take a chance on it and I went ahead and just covered because the spreads were actually, they were starting to tighten up a little bit, but I just didn't trust this stock at all. So I was like, okay, let me just cover it. And uh, I ended up getting my, getting out of all uh, 500 at uh, 39.62. So somewhere, 39.62, so somewhere over here. Yeah. So in this candle, I honestly thought that we were below 39.50, but I didn't look at the ask. So it probably gave me a crappy fill. So I should have made more than $75, but
but I was just happy to be out of that stock. It was just very jumpy. Now, the next trade I took was on MU. This one actually collapsed on me immediately. MU was gapping down this morning. Hold on a second now. That's not it. It was actually gapping up. MU was actually gapping up this morning. Okay. Very good, legitimate entry. I would take this this tomorrow, but unfortunately, the market just wasn't having it. So it went up. It pulled back to the moving average. Next candle, make a new high is your entry. It actually went up, and uh, so I got filled 300 shares. I kind of chased it a little bit um, right here. I got filled right at 56.44. My stop was going to be here at 56. Uh, what was it? 56.14. So immediately, I got filled. Next candle, sold off, and uh, I got out with a $96 loss. So can't really do anything about that. I mean, it's it's a good legitimate bull flag. We also have a, a double bottom here, but I didn't that's not where I made my stop. Next candle to make a new high is my entry and the bottom of that candle is my exit. So 5614 is my my end or my stop loss, my max stop loss. So as you can see, I was right. It actually ended up selling below the double bottom and everything. So good thing that I didn't hold it. Now the next trade I took, this was this is the one that kind of made me mad. This was just, whew, this was ridiculous. So Lowe's got some news about a CEO or something, and um, let's see here, my entry on Lowe's was eighty nine. So I saw this kind of curling up here. Actually, I believe I took it on the, I took it on the one minute. So I got filled right at 938, so right here. So what I was gonna do is waited for the pullback, bought it over the whole number, and then my stop was gonna be down here at 88.32. That's why I only took 125 shares. As you can see, it was just kinda going back and forth, and it actually hit my two to one, but it flashed up so fast, I couldn't, I, I didn't push my partial. It's just, it's not fair for me to, um, it's not that it's not fair. I mean, it, this is the market we're talking about, but I want to get my two to one out of this. So I didn't end up getting it. And then I noticed that the market was actually starting to head down. So it was actually starting to curl back down. So I think maybe somewhere around, let's see here, maybe somewhere around here, 10.05, somewhere here in this area. And I, I noticed that there were a lot of topping tails. So I kind of suspected the market to start pulling back. And then we got this. We got this five minute um, just engulfing candle. I was like, oh crap, the market's turning around. I got $30 in profit, let's just take it. Um, so I went ahead and took it instead of taking my loss because as you can see, the market turned around and then this just started going with it. When it rains, everybody gets wet. So um, I ended up getting out of lows right at, let's see here, got filled. Actually, I bought another 75 shares on those as well. Uh, so I got out 200 shares right at 89.37, ended up making 29 bucks. Uh, better than nothing, I knew that this engulfing candle was gonna take us down, so. And by, if you guys don't know what an engulfing uh, candle is, it's a, it's like a bearish engulfing candle is if the candle that's red, that is making right now, is bigger than the previous green candle. It basically just engulfs the whole thing. So this candle right here is bigger than this candle. So it's a bearish, it's called a bearish engulfing candle, meaning that your price is probably gonna start pulling back and make some sort of um, some sort of pullback to a moving average or something like that. So as you can see, Lowe's actually ended up selling off. So good thing I got out with my profit. I tried not to be too stubborn on it and uh, took the little bit that I had. Now, the trade that saved my day, um, I noticed, Obviously on Thursday and Friday we sold off majorly. And I noticed that uh, the SPY was actually starting to get very, very heavy. So let me unlink this real quick. I'll show it to you guys as I saw it. Uh, VXX is the inverse ETF of the SPY. Um, you guys have heard me trade or seen me trade this a, a couple of times already. So let's see here. Let's. Let's go back to the SPY first. So during this time, I just got out of lows, and I 
gotten the 29 bucks or whatnot, and I noticed that everything was starting to turn around. And as well, I saw the NASDAQ 100 also starting to break below a certain point. So the NASDAQ 100 is the top 100 companies um, that are traded, and they are the biggest uh, 100 companies that are traded. So I noticed that this was actually starting to get near the lows. And right at 10.10, I saw it break below the lows. I'm expecting the SPY to follow. So the NASDAQ, a lot of the times, will make the move first. The SPY will follow, and then they'll just both start going uh, towards closing the gap. So I noticed that, and I went ahead and went long the VXX right at 40, uh, let's see here, at 10.12. It's probably this candle. No, nope, actually, we're, that's the one minute. Right here. Right in here, right here in this candle. So I went long the VXX at 47.14. Then I added another 200 shares at 47.20. So I was 400 shares long. And then my stop was actually going to be here at the 40. Let's see here, 46.62. So it's kind of a long, a far away stop. But if you notice, the SPY actually has a very, very long way to fall. So we gapped up significantly because of the past couple of days, just the huge sell-offs, and um, I expected us to close this gap. Now, my halfway target was going to be 260, and I was going to start selling. So uh, I went long. I had 400 shares, and on the VXX, I started selling. As the SPY started breaking below this 260 mark, uh, I sold 100, sold 100 at 49.11. I decided to sell half. Around the 60 mark, so 49.17 sold another hundred, uh, 48.63 sold another hundred, and now this little consolidation really here is what kind of kicked me off. So right in here, so I noticed that we sold off very quickly and we quickly got bought up. So remember what I said earlier about the engulfing candle. So now it can be a bearish engulfing candle, and then you can also have a bullish engulfing candle. So if you put this here side by side and you compare it with the volume of what's actually going on that'll give you a general direction of which way the market wants to go so I saw it sell off and then I saw this candle happen in the five minute chart and it had higher volume which means that buyers are starting to come into the market and are starting to drive the price higher so then what I told myself I said over this consolidation if it comes up and over I'm gonna be out so the last hundred shares I put a stop at 48 um, I think it was 48, like 49 or something like that. It looks like it flashed up and then it came back down. So it triggered me out and I got kicked right at 48.54. Ended up making $677 on VXX. Now, um, we are pulling back, which is a good healthy thing to do. Now, um, do I expect this gap to be closed? Possibly. Um, is the SPY almost impossible to predict? Yes. So we could actually either come back over the highs because the SPY has been so volatile lately that you really can't guess which way it's going to go. I just knew that during this time with all these topping tails and it breaking below the low that we were going to at least fill some of this, this gap. Um, but So we could break over the highs, but most likely what I think is that we're going to end up closing the gap here at 258. I don't know. We'll have to check back at the end of the day to see what happens. Uh, but with I think Facebook is leading the charge for the day. With uh, it selling off, uh, there's a very likelihood that we could either start going sideways or start heading a little bit lower. So what if I was going to take a trade on this, I'd probably wait for it to come back up somewhere around VWAP and then uh, wait for it to fail again, go into the 9 and just ride it down to the rest of uh, maybe a small share size to the rest of the day and just kind of see where it goes. But yeah, so those are all the trades I took uh, for the day. Um, happy with how actually I traded the VXX. I can't really complain on that. I, I uh, kind of called the consolidation. I got kicked out when you're supposed to. You're um, and definitely selling on the way down made it a lot easier for me uh, because selling is such a hard thing or covering either one um, because you never really know where it's going to stop. And there are certain signals that you can do or like if it hits, if it gives you a certain signal, like if it's a uh, engulfing bullish candle for you to cover. Um, if you hit your target, you should start selling. If you get a certain amount of green or red candles, you should sell. But it's it's such a tricky game. Like you can pick an entry very easily. Like if especially if you have a breakout. But selling and covering is probably the harder part. You just, you just have to make sure that you are at least doing one to one 
for you to be profitable. So I was only risking around 200, maybe 230 at the time. I just kept moving my stop up, 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 and up. So I was risking less money as it was working my way. So I actually ended up uh, doing almost three to one on uh, VXX. So I'm definitely very happy the way that I played that. Um, yeah, that, that is it for the day. If you guys have any questions, make sure to put it down in the comment section below. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe. Um, I do recaps for you guys uh, almost every single day. And then uh, actually today is Mentorship Monday. So I'm um, going to cover a new topic today. And uh, also, like I tell you guys, uh, join our Facebook group. I put my watch list up every single morning for you guys to be able to profit off of. Uh, the link is down in the description. It's completely free. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.